How you doing, Casey? Another day in paradise. Great to see you again. Likewise. So, uh, so let's start right out. Uh, please tell us what exactly is actively aerated compost tea. All right. So the goal is to create a microorganically active brew that you're going to be able to use to inoculate your soil. And so the whole idea is to create beneficial microorganisms, both bacterial and fungal, that we will add to the soil to really um, boost that soil life. And, you know, it sort of keys into that concept of the soil food web and, you know, sort of this idea that... Uh, we don't grow plants, the soil grows plants. So if you feed the soil, the soil will feed the plants. And so it sounds like this is a great way to introduce uh, beneficial microbes and effectively inoculate the soil. Bingo, especially like, you know, for instance, um, you can always have more and better, right? And, and soil that, you know, either was dried out a lot or, um, wasn't particularly microorganically active to begin with. This is a great way to sort of um, uh, jumpstart your soil. Far out, far out, well, wonderful. Well, hey, uh, how do we do this? All right, so we start with worm castings. And what we do is we add a little bit of molasses and a little bit of fish hydrolysate to the worm castings. And we let them sit for a couple, three, four days. You know, it's not, a, not super precise, but we let them sit for a few days until they start to build up this white, fungal layer on the top and that's uh, this is what's known as inoculating the worm castings and so gotcha. these are now inoculated with a fungal growth that we are going to use to um, to to sort of as a as a basis for the tea and so this basis will uh, inoculate this tea and then it will grow out while we're in the course of, uh, you know we'll, we'll bubble the tea for about 36 hours and so this initial um, batch of worm castings will then grow into a microorganically active fungal tea and so beautiful so we're just gonna like uh, you know multiply the microbes from from Bingo. here into this larger batch Bingo. and so we're gonna put this into this bag here this is a, a mesh bag which allows the water to circulate through it and to percolate out some of the fungal components which will then grow in the tea and so um, the batch that we're making today is a 50 gallon batch and so a lot of folks you know smaller gardens and such are going to use a, a closer to a five gallon batch so the ratios that i'm going to give you are going to be the same but the amounts are going to be uh 10 times what you would use for a five gallon batch or what you would use for in this case a 50 gallon batch that makes so sense we start off with 20 cups of worm castings and i like, see you're stirring it up there sorry to interrupt i see you're stirring it up there is that just so it to get it unstuck from the bucket yeah <laughs> that's really it, it seems like it it's unstuck. really in there yeah it, it was it had dried out a little bit so i was kind of loosening it up and so we start with 20 cups of worm castings and like i said that's for a 50 gallon so if you were going to do it for a five gallon you would start with uh two cups and then so we add the worm castings into the into the the mesh bag Scrape it around and get everything out of there, get all the goodness in there. And then we use a granulated kelp. So we use two cups of granulated kelp. We use one cup of calcium phosphate. Okay. And those are our dry components. And then for our moist components, we have a half cup of fish hydrolysate and we have four cups of molasses. And both the fish and the molasses will help to grow out the bacteria. Wonderful. And then we roll so, uh, this little guy down, and we clip him. And so we will pour the molasses into the tank. Makes a nice bloom in there, and I'll kind of just rinse a get as much get it Get it all out, possible. sure. Yeah. So what role does the molasses play uh, in in this mix? It provides sugars. Okay. And so the sugars help for the help the microorganics to grow. And and one of the really key parts of this is keeping it um, uh, aerobic. The the difference between aerobic and anaerobic means has air and does not have air. And so a tea that is anaerobic that doesn't have air is going to go. It, it's going to it's going to go foul. It's going to smell bad. It's going to be funky. And it's not going to deliver what you want for your plants. It's going to create a, you know, microorganic activity that's not beneficial for your plants. And so, so we want an aerated. That's that's the bingo. that's the, the that's first the word in, in actively aerated compost bingo. tea. And so we to to create that we use this 
We have this little guy here. He's kind of a, an amalgamation of parts we've stuck together. Uh -huh. And he's got little holes in the bottom that will allow bubbles to come out. And then we keep the end cap off. Some people will put the end cap on. That's kind mm -hmm. of a proclivity. This, is, this system was originally designed for a 5-gallon, and we've adapted it to a 55-gallon. So, um, and so we plunk this down in here. And we put the bag in. And then we put the lid on, and we'll hook up the pump. So we take this pump here, plug that on there. gets to bubbling and you can hear them starting to bubble down in there. Absolutely, you can hear the agitation going yeah. on in there right now. So this is introducing the air into that mix. Bingo. And uh, so how long does this brew for? So we'll brew for 36 hours generally. It's, you know, It depends on how warm it is. Um, the warmer it is out and the warmer the water is, the less you have to brew for. Okay. We like 36 hours, sometimes it goes 48. We, we try to set a minimum of 36 hours generally is our goal. So with that sort of range, how do you know when it's ready? Um, you can see, you'll start to see the fungal, the, the strands of the fungal hyphae in, in the compost tea. Um, also, definitely going by smell. If it, if it smells good, it's you know sweet and earthy, yep. that's what you're looking for. If it smells foul or rancid or vinegary, that's, you, you really want, you, you're, you're trending into um, uh, bad bacteria possibly. And one of the things that's, you know, this is, this is one of those subjects that there's such a wealth of information out there that I would really encourage people to, to get online, to start reading about it. There's a lot of different opinions. There's a lot of different discussion about it. And really, um, you Beneficial know, sort of use, microbes, yeah, soil food web. Absolutely. And, you know, start to use this as, you know, use this as kind of like a basis as opposed to a be all end all because it really is a subject that, that, that people can really benefit from and that they can learn a lot from. And so, you know, for me, I feel like I've really only just just barely begun to scratch the surface and sure so it's definitely something that I want to learn more about and that I would really encourage people to learn more about. I've been using the AACT myself for many years now actually. So one of the so uh, the prime method you use to determine whether or not you have a good batch of tea is to use your nose and you say uh, it either smells sweet or good yeah. versus a foul or sour smell. Yeah, sweet and earthy, and, and, and that's what you want. You know? And so if you have, if you end up with, you know, for instance, the, the pump went off, or you know, you didn't get enough aeration, um, and you end up with a foul-smelling tea, I, I would not recommend applying it. I would recommend, um, you know, just discard that. Discard it, yeah, and and um, and, and start start fresh. And, okay. And, um, one of the really important parts of it is to make sure to clean all of the components very, very well because what can happen is bad, bad bacteria can breed um, in, in dirty components and then you can end up starting out right out the gate inoculating your tea with bad bacteria. So when you're finished with a batch, it sounds critical to make sure that everything is cleaned Absolutely. real well between before starting the next Absolutely. batch effectively. All of the components, all of the buckets that we use, everything gets scrubbed out, soap and water, proper scrubbing to make sure that you're starting off with, it's kind of like cooking, you don't want to start off with a dirty pan. And so um, <laughs> we try to make sure that everything is, is very clean. Um, what we do is, so we've got this, this barrel has a faucet plumbed into it here, and so we'll turn the faucet on and we'll fill up five gallon buckets with it. And so this is our undiluted tea. Okay. What we do is we take it and we, um, we divide it into fourths. So a bucket will go, uh, one bucket will go into four empty buckets, a quarter each, and then we'll fill it the rest of the way up with water. And so we have a diluted tea that we'll then use as a soil drench. Okay. I know some people who go just undiluted. Yep. Um, I know some people who do diluted a little more. Part of it depends on um, how much soil you're trying to inoculate, how much tea you have. Can you overdo it? Can you have a too high of a concentration? Um, yes and no. You know, I sure. mean, there are um, there are fertility components in here: the calcium phosphate, the um, the fish hydrolysate, um, and the kelp. And so you you know, it, it's not. I don't know that you're going to hurt anything by putting more. But if you put more than the plants need, then you're sort of then it's just it's excess fertility that's being more put waste. In. Yeah, more okay. waste, and and you know, essentially, um, uh, it's going to cost you some money. Do that so that you know the uh, 
and and you know, the smaller the plants, the less they really need. The bigger the plants, the more they can, the more they they can totally use. So you makes know, perfect sense. Yeah. So the ratio you recommend again is uh, one fourth a mm -hmm. tea to water. Yeah, and and you know, play around with it. It's it's definitely. Um, I, I think different. You know, like a, a warmer climate. You know, I would I would venture to guess you could probably use more tea because there's going to be more microorganic activity in the soil a cooler climate probably a little less tea but sure that that is that's purely a guess at this point and again i would definitely recommend to folks to like uh, use this as kind of a starting point and really start to read up on it it's a fascinating subject and it sort of really touches on that you know soil science and um, microorganic activities and, and you know the, there's there's a there's just a wealth of information there. absolutely are there any other ways to use or apply uh, AACT mm -hmm. uh, besides the soil drench you can so I know some folks who do and we have at times done uh, uh, foliar sprays with it mm -hmm. um, it can be very good for building benefic beneficial um, uh, microbial activity on your leaf surfaces the flip side of that is that we're seeing with the testing regulations, they don't, a lot of the times the microbial testing doesn't differentiate between beneficial and harmful interesting, um, interesting. microorganic activities. So you can end up, for instance, if you know, never spray during flower because you can totally end up failing a microbial test, even though it's, it's beneficial. So I'm not going to suggest that you're putting something bad on your plants, but at the same time, if you fail a microbial test for it, then you, you've, you've kind of... Um, hurt your process. Sure. So uh, if someone is interested in using it as a foliar, certainly only in the veg stage Definitely. and not in the flowering Definitely, stage. Yeah, early and, and er, earlier on in veg, like, you know, once we hit, oh, get a little slop over. Once we hit, um, you know, like at this point, we're, you know, we're middle of July right now. We've stopped foliaring. We're not going to do any more foliar feeding. We're strictly sure. doing soil drench at this point. That was fantastic, Casey. Thank you so much for explaining what actively aerated compost tea is. My how pleasure. to make it, how to use it. <laughs>